If only you knew the things that you need to know before buying your first camera or upgrading your camera. And that's, that's what this episode is all about. This is not an episode where I'm going to go, oh, you should have this lens and that particular brand of camera and you should spend so much money on X, Y, Z. No, this is really a process which I wish I would have known when I bought my first camera because seven years down the line, about 20 cameras further, five systems, 22 lenses and a ton of accessories, I can honestly say, if only you knew. And that's what this video is going to be about. It's about and if you're new to this channel, I'm Paul, I take photos, and you can find my work on www.paultakesphotos.com. Anyways, the first thing you should really do before you even look at a camera is set your budget. And that's really important because once you go into photography, videography, or hybrid shooting, costs add up quickly, thousands and thousands of dollars, and take it from a guy who's actually over the last six years bought 20 cameras, about 30 lenses, five different systems, and now I'm finding to my final state with four or five different cameras for different reasons. I really wish I would have taken a different, added a different approach towards this different process. Yeah, so once you have your budget, split it up into three parts, camera, lens, and critical accessories. We'll go into that later on. The second topic that I really wished I would have done is to go into my mobile photography libraries, whether it's on iOS or on Android, it doesn't matter. You have a library of all your pictures. Pick 100 to 200 pictures and then categorize them. I should have categorized them, you know, street, still life, sports, public events, concerts, portrait, whatever. Pick them out so you can get a small little ranking where you can see what type of pictures you shot the most. So click on the information button. That's where you see where you have your focal length in millimeters. Yeah, note those down as well because it really shows you what your, per, what your preferred focal length is, so what type of lens later on you should be looking at. And so that's the second thing I wish I would have done differently. Now, the third one is about the cameras itself, and this is where things get a bit complicated. Specifically, when you go onto YouTube, there's such a wider range of reviews, like on my channel, uh, and it's difficult to really see what the best camera is. So in this case, I ran a poll a couple of weeks ago here on the channel, you see it here, the most important thing for the people that are watching me, so you, is the actual form factor and the weight of the camera. Yeah, megapixels, not that important. So look at the form factor. So how is the size, the weight? What type of batteries does it have? Do they have an excellent life? Yes or no? Type of sensor, one inch sensor, micro four thirds, APS-C, or full frame. You're thinking, what is this? You'll see it here. It's the size of the sensor. The bigger the size, the more it costs, linked into your budget. Then there are things like autofocus. You hear it a lot here. Autofocus, this, that eye detection, take it from me. Over the last three years, most of the systems have updated in autofocus, but specifically in video, this is a big thing for sports photography, fast photography, you need good autofocus. Yeah? Uh, eye detection for portrait photography. Well, I believe before 2015, uh, portraits were taken even in the 1800s. So, and they were still sharp. It's also a bit of skill involved. It's not all, you know, that the camera does for you. For megapixels, yes, there's a case that a lot of megs and megapixels you might need, but that's either to crop in, yeah, portrait, sports, macro, or to really edit uh, all the colors and yeah, the more megapixels, the more real estate uh, you have in editing. Yeah, but other than that, believe me, a 12 megapixel camera can still take fantastic pictures because it's about light, composition uh, and subject. Yeah, so I wouldn't look too much into megapixels. I would really go for a camera where you say, okay, this lays nice in the hand, nice form factor. I know what this baby does. You have two main choices between prime and zoom lenses and in a poll, a couple of weeks ago on my channel, 75% of my viewers chose uh, prime lenses above zoom lenses. I think when you're starting up, pick a lens. Again, go back to the information you have uh, from the analysis you ran on your portfolio, your mobile phone portfolio, and you pretty much start seeing, oh, hold on, do I need a, uh, a zoom lens, yes or no? Depends type of photography for concert, sports, birding, you really need zoom lenses for product photography. You can even do it. But again, you know, budget, budget, budget. 
Don't overcomplicate it. Pick one lens, stick with it, shoot with it. Then there's also an option of vintage lenses and that would normally require an adapter. Vintage lenses, so these are the old manual ones from the 60s, 70s and 80s, you can pick them up for relatively low money and it gives you manual experience, which is pretty cool. Manual focusing, setting your aperture, you learn a lot. So you think that, ha, ah, step one to four, budget, know what kind of photographer I am, I have my camera picked up, lens, let's buy this thing. I'm, no, don't buy immediately. What I would always recommend, and I would wish I would have done this, is go out, spend the money, so let's say you have a budget of $200 um, for whatever it is, go out, rent them, borrow your cameras, or go to local photographers. Yeah, if you just ask them, they normally are pretty willing to help you out with good advice, and they, and they should know as well, because just like me, they do it for a living. Me, I do it as a hobby. Yeah, but don't buy immediately. Be patient. Yeah, and always, if you want to buy, never consider, I would not say never, but consider looking at the used market. You can get some good quality cameras, but just, you know, relax, go into it, rent first. You can always spend your money on a camera, but rent it first. Now, then there's a part here which you don't often hear about is hidden cost. Accessories <clears throat> are a well-known one. Yeah, what I just said, you know, accessories you can spend tons on. Filters, magnetic filters, gimbals, flashes, you name it. I think the two critical accessories you need first is a hygiene kit so you can clean your sensor. Very cheap and always one or two spare batteries and you can easily choose a third party here. For the rest, over time, you can add some of the things. So keep it simple. Don't do like me, I wish I would have known this. Don't go into all this gear because you really don't need it. Then there's also one little thing that nobody ever tells you about in most videos, editing. And video editing, if you go into Adobe Lightroom or let's say Capture One, this is what almost everybody use, you'll be paying a premium a year, think hundreds of dollars. Alternatively, in the beginning, the first year or so, just keep it simple, use Snapseed, v, VSCO, simple apps which are for free and you can hone your editing skills. Anyways, you can always go into the paid one, but you know, I've paid over the last seven years for Adobe, I've paid nearly $2,000, just to give you a little indication of cost. And um, last but not least, once you have your camera, spend time with it, get, it, get to know it, look at tutorials online, uh, get to know where your buttons are, get comfortable with it, shoot every day, experiment, do whatever you want to, but enjoy photography. Hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below.